for this week. We have studied about the concept of sampling distributions. So now we will implement those concepts on the OTT platform dataset. And the first thing that we are going to do now is that we will see how to obtain the sample statistics that is sample mean or the sample variance, sample median or the sample range. So these how can we obtain from the data set using Python. So for this we will first import the necessary libraries. As you know we are going to import pandas as pd. Okay, So this will be used for your data analysis and data manipulation. We will also import numpy which is used for numerical computations. So now import numpy as np. Now we will basically use the pandas to read the csv file that is our ott perception data and store it in this variable that is data so from pandas pd dot read underscore csv ott underscore perception underscore data dot csv so now we will set the sample size. So we can suppose set the sample size to 100. So this basically means that we want to randomly select 100 data points from a column. Suppose uh, in this case, let us see for the age column. So here this means that we are going to randomly select 100 data points from the age column of the data set. Okay? So you can change it according to your problem size. So now we will use this method over here dot sample method which is basically provided by pandas in order to randomly select. So let us use write the code for that. So from this data frame that we have from data we will extract your age column we are focusing on that and then we will apply the sample method over here which is used to randomly select 100 data points from the age column. So we will write in this the sample size that is n. We have already defined n as 100. So we will write that and also we will mention random state as 42. If you can recall last lecture also we had this random state as 42 which basically ensures that reproducibility will be taken care of if you are using this random status 42 or 123 anything that you want to use over here. So basically since here also we are drawing a random sample and we, if you do not want the random sample to get changed every time you run the code so that is why we give this number over here. Now let us find the sample mean. Sample mean for this we will use the numpy is numpy library and from there we will use this function mean function mean in sample we have already have this okay so let me just see what is this sample mean so it gives the value 42.55 so this is the sample mean the statistic that we studied i think so if you can recall 1 over n summation xi. So first of all we have decided that what will be the sample size and then from this particular column we have sampled 100 data points and calculated the mean for that. You can likewise take any other column and also vary this sample size as well. The next statistic that we saw was sample variance. So sample variance can again be found out using the numpy libraries var function var and here we write sample as well here we write ddof is equal to 1 which is basically your degrees of freedom. So th this is delta degrees of freedom. Here we fix it as 1 which basically means that we are talking about the sample variance. It is not the population variance. If you would have been interested in population variance, you would have mentioned here 0. Okay, So if DDF is equal to 0, you mentioned, then it will calculate your population variance. Otherwise, if you keep it as 1, it will calculate your sample variance. 
and if you can recall we had this the difference between the sample variance and the population variance the difference in their formula is just the different the denominator is different okay so instead of n you divide the sum of squared differences by n in the population variances otherwise if it is sample variance you divide it by n minus 1 because then it will be an unbiased estimator so here we are basically specifying that we want the sample variance so let us see what is the answer to this it is 127.78 likewise we can calculate sample median also sample underscore median we can write so we will again use this numpy's median function over here and we can just simply mention sample so what is the sample median it is 44 okay so median and mean are very close and finally we write the sample range sample underscore range which will be np again the numpy library and from here we will use this max and min functions max of sample minus np dot min of sample okay so if you find out this it is 40 okay so you can print these um, sample statistic also and you know the usual command i can just write it for one of them so you can likewise do it for the rest of them so if you want to suppose print the sample mean so you will write it in this way sample mean so you can put a colon also if you want so it basically depends how you want your output to look like accordingly you can do the customization over here so if you write sample mean because this is the variable in which we have stored the sample mean so if you run this you will get this like sample mean is coming and then a colon is also coming as we wanted if you remove this it will not come okay so if you just see over here it will go away but it would be better if you specify it so sample mean is 42.55 likewise you can print other statistics also so here what we have done is basically we have loaded a data set we have randomly sampled 100 data points from the age column and then we have calculated different sample statistics so now we are going to find the sampling distribution of the sample mean okay so we have seen that this is the first topic when we were talking about the sampling distribution so let us see how do we do that so again we as we have already imported pandas and numpy library so we need some additional libraries so let me just write their names import matplotlib so here this would be used for creating plots matplotlib and pyplot basically from here as plt and then we also import sorry you will use the scipy library from there from scipy stat module scipy dot stats module you will import norm norm basically this function is used to draw the normal distributions to work around with the normal distribution so that is why we import it from your scipy library okay so we have already loaded the data set here if you want we can do it again we can just mention it or i can write it here df okay now we define the sample size and the number of samples that we want because in sampling distribution you have seen that we take samples of different sizes okay and as we keep on increasing the sample size your population distribution becomes normal right so that was in your central limit theorem so here first we will say the sampling distribution of the sample mean then we will move on to the central limit theorem so here we will first define the sample size and the number of samples that we want so let sample size be 
sample size is equal to 50 and the number of samples basically that we need is num dot samples is equal to 1000 okay so we are setting it to sam sample size is 50 it means that we are going to draw a sample of size 50 each time okay and how many samples are we going to take we are going to repeat this process 1000 times okay so 1000 samples will be drawn and each sample would be of size 50. now we will create an empty list over here that will store the sample means create an empty list to store the sample means so here let me just write it sample means is equal to just this so this will basically create an empty list okay and the sample means will be calculated at each iteration now and then it will be added to to this list okay so that will be no longer empty so for this we will create a loop that iterates these many number of times that is 1000 samples we want to it will iterate these many number of times and in each iteration it will take a sample calculates its sample mean and finally it will append it to this list over here okay so at the end of 1000 iterations it will no longer be empty okay so we will now write a for loop for this so for i in range num underscore samples so basically you can uh, instead of i this is the variable name that i am using you can use anything else also so here we are saying that it is going to iterate these many number of times so range why we are writing because it will generate a sequence of numbers that will start from 0 and it will go up till num samples minus 1 so the range will be calculated in that way for this now we are going to draw a random sample of size 50 from this data set so we will store it in sample is equal to df dot sample and we will write the sample size as we have done earlier also here if you can recall we have used this sample function sample method so here also we are using the same thing once we have drawn the sample we will calculate the sample mean so for this we will write sample underscore mean this will be basically sample here we will be focusing on age dot mean so it will calculate the sample mean for this particular column from so basically from age a sample would be taken and whatever sample has been taken for that the mean will be calculated and finally this will be appended in your sample means sample means dot append sample underscore mean okay so whatever is calculated here this will get added to this list okay so what we are doing over here we are initiating a for loop which will iterate these many number of times that we have already defined over here num samples and in each iteration it will draw a random sample over here of the sample size that is mentioned 50 okay and it will calculate the mean of this age column and then it will append that sample mean to this list and it contains the means of 1000 number of samples that we have taken from this age column okay so now in order to plot the histogram we would need the min and the max in order to specify the range for the x-axis of the histogram so we'll calculate these range so for that we can write min underscore sample mean sample and mean so this would be basically calculating the minimum of the list over here that we have obtained min sample means likewise min sorry max underscore sample underscore mean so that will store your maximum of these sample means so this basically would determine the range for the x-axis in the histogram 
so you can now um, decide the size of this figure or the size of the histogram that you want so plot dot figure we will write and in this we will mention the figure size to be of suppose 10 by 6 so we write it over here and uh, so here itself we can write the command for your plot the histogram of the sample means with this specified x axis range that we have defined over here so we will write plot dot hist plt so we are using this matplotlib over here and dot hist will be used for your histogram as we have studied this earlier also so here we will write the sample means basically this is what we want to um, because this is what we have this list over here right sample means then we will write the bins how many bins do we need suppose we need 20 bins and we can make the edge color as black suppose then we mention the range range would be min sample mean to back sample mean so let me just mention it okay next will be your density so density we want to keep it as true so basically this would normalize the histogram that we are drawing so that the sum of the area under the bars that you see that would be one if you keep the density as false then it would just plot the actual count of the data points in each bin okay so we are basically trying to scale your heights of the uh, heights of those bars so here let me just write density is equal to true and if you want to add transparency to the bars you can write alpha is equal to 0.6 and you can finally label it as sample mean so this is how your histogram is looking like okay so the x-axis you have specified already it will go from the minimum to the maximum okay in this case we have used 20 bins as you can see from here the color is blue and we have edges we have made as black okay this is the histogram that you have drawn now suppose you want to overlay a normal distribution curve over this in order to understand and compare it with the normal distribution curve so for that we first need to calculate the mean and standard deviation of the sample means that we have obtained over here so for that let us just write these steps mean underscore so we want the mean of the sample means that we have already calculated so again we will use this numpy and from there mean function will be used to find out the mean of these sample means and for again for std i am just writing this for your standard deviation np dot std you can write here and here you can just write sample underscore means so this would calculate the mean and standard deviation of the sample means list okay so this would describe basically the central tendency and your uh, spread of the sampling distribution now with this mean and standard deviation of the data set we now generate values for the normal distribution curve in order to do that we will write this steps over here so so we are generating basically let me just write general generate the values for normal distribution so x will be so numpy library so it will use line space sorry spacey so here now we would first of all mention the min sample mean so min minimum of this min sample mean 
comma max sample mean comma 100 so here basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to create the values for the x-axis of the histogram okay and so basically the range of the sample mean so it will start from the minimum it will go up till maximum and 100 number of points this is basically denoting that we want 100 evenly spaced points to be within these minimum and the maximum range you can change it obviously so when you write this line so this is basically creating an array x that you have over here so this would represent a range of x values for the normal distribution curve and it will be used as the x-axis now you want the corresponding y-axis okay for the normal pdf so you can write y for this we will write norm dot pdf so we if you can recall we have used imported it over here from scipy so we are using it to draw this normal pdf so norm.pdf x will be the array of x values that we have generated just now then we will write mean underscore sample underscore means that you have found out here and the s standard deviation std underscore sample underscore means so minimum is this is the sorry this this is the mean of the sample means that we have just now calculated and this is the standard deviation that we have found out so this line would basically calculate the corresponding y values based on the normal pdf for each x value that you have over here so these two are basically used to this this curve basically can be plotted in order to visualize the theoretical distribution of the sample means under the assumption of the normal distribution so now we can finally plot the normal distribution curve so we will use again this plt dot plot for our purpose so x is your x axis y is there and then suppose you want a red dashed line dash so that is why i am writing two dash over here and uh, this is what you want and you want the label to be suppose the normal distribution curve so you can write normal distribution and then suppose you want to add the sample size also to the plot so you can write use this annotate, annotate function from the matplotlib library so we will write plt dot annotate so we want the sample size f the sample so we are using this f string okay we have used and explained this earlier also so sample size so first it will evaluate this and then finally it will print this string sample size now we want to write this x y chords basically tell you where to place this sample size okay so if you are writing x y so let me just complete this x y over here is point suppose you want it point 0.7 and point 0.9 and then x y chords is equal to axis fraction and font size suppose is 10 so here this annotate function will basically add the sample size to the plot so for here we will first be writing the sample size that we are using it will evaluate this sample size from the above lines and then it will substitute it over here x y basically it will specify the coordinates where this annotation will be placed so if you are writing 0 0.7 comma 0 0.9 these coordinates tell you that it will be positioned at 70 percent of the width and 90 percent of the height so basically here this portion that is the top sorry bottom left corner this is 0 0 and the top right corner is basically your 1 1 so you can place wherever you want and you can change these coordinates to see how it will change and basically here this parameter over here it is going to specify that the 
coordinates that you have provided over here they are in the relative units of the axis of the plots so when i have written it together it is now running and giving you in this way so x label is sample mean i have written y label as density over here title is sampling distribution of sample mean legend we are showing over here and this is plot dot show okay so overall what we have done over here is that we have performed like bootstrapping to basically estimate the sampling distribution of the sample mean so we first visualize it using a histogram and then we overlaid a normal distribution curve and added relevant labels and annotations to the plot so you have written sample size as 50 and uh, if in case you want to vary it and see here suppose let me change this over here 100 and run it so this is how it will look like okay so you can see that it has now it is now a better curve as compared to earlier histograms this is now looking better yeah, so basically as you increase the sample size your sampling distribution of the sample mean would be approximately normal so here this legend is coming this side so you can alter this here by the command for the plot that we have done so here i can just increase this size plt dot figure so here let me just mention the fig size which is suppose 10 by 8 and then run it okay so normal distribution sample mean distribution we can change the coordinates of this one we can suppose make it 0.8 and this one as 0.8 you can see that by changing these coordinates you can change where you want this sample size thing to come so this was all about the sampling distribution of sample mean so now we will basically iterate a loop so let us start this for loop so for loop over the sample sizes for n in sample size sample means is this okay so it will create an empty list to store the sample means for the current size okay suppose here it picks 10 so here we have created an empty list so basically what you have done earlier for sampling distribution of sample mean this would be a sub part of that because there we drew, uh, drew this histogram and the normal probability curve for a single sample size at a time so here we basically want to show you that if you change the sample sizes if you take a larger and larger sample how the histograms would change okay and how it would be depicting the normal distribution so for that we first need for n in sample size so basically it would create an empty list to store the sample means for this particular size that it has taken now it will again we will create a for loop over here for suppose this in range 1000 sorry okay so here we are going to loop over 1000 times to draw samples and calculate their corresponding means okay whatever sample size it has picked over here for that thousand samples would be taken so once let us see how to draw the sample the same thing that we have done earlier so sample underscore sample is equal to so here we have saved your data is df okay the data frame is df so let us just use that df dot sample n okay so it will draw a random sample of size n from this ott data set then we will calculate the sample mean sample mean would be this way sample we will write age over here okay and then we would apply this mean function so it will calculate the mean of that sample 
and then we will write sample underscore means dot append so this would be finally appended to the sample means list that you have already created this one first it will be added so let me just complete this one sample underscore mean so this one would basically here if you see for n in sample sizes sample means it has created an empty list once this size has been selected then it will go through this for loop and it will calculate all these things and then this will be finally stored in the sample means this overall list also this finally will be updated so this would be sample underscore means underscore all sizes dot append So this would basically store the sample means for the current size and after calculating sample means for all 1000 iterations for the current sample size this list of sample means of all sizes would be appended. Now based upon this now you can plot your histogram. So plt dot hist here we would write the sample means that we want bins suppose you want 20 and alpha is 0 0.6 and label we want as f sample size So this n will be first evaluated and then printed okay so you can add labels also over here so we know all these term parameters over here right so for each sample size it is going to print your his it is going to give you a histogram 20 bins and transparency is 0 0.6 and it will have a label as this Okay, so now if you want to add labels, so it will be plot dot x label. So let us keep it as sample mean. Next, we can write the y label plot dot y label. So there we could keep as suppose frequency because of this. And then finally, we can have this title. Send CLT, we can just write CLT visualization. Okay. Next, PLT dot legend. So you see how your histograms have come if you see in this legend over here blue the first one is the sample size 5 okay so this outer histogram that you see it has a wider spread so the sample size is 5 next is 10 so this inner second one you see this orange color this is your sample size 10 histogram corresponding to that and then for 20 this green finally you have this one as 100 okay so you see that as you are increasing the sample size the distribution is getting is approaching your normal distribution okay so you will get a perfect normal distribution if you keep on increasing the sample size okay so if you just plot the population itself then obviously if it is skewed you will get a skewed data but rather if you take the key keep on taking large number of samples 
and when you increase the sample sizes also then and you plot their sample means then basically it will be normally distributed and you can see that difference over here so clearly so you can compare different histograms of sample means for different sample sizes in this same plot over here now if suppose you want to create a separate figure to plot the pdf for sample means okay so for the same thing if you suppose you want to see in the terms of pdf or the curve of that so let us just add over here we can write maybe here only i can write create a separate figure so this would again be figure size would be this Now, since you can see that we had different sample sizes, okay, so we need to create a for loop that will iterate over different sample sizes and plot the PDF for each size. So, for this, we will first of all initiate this for i n in enumerate, sorry, this will be i, this is n in enumerate. And here bracket we will write sample sizes okay this is what we had initially sample sizes so here we are initiating a for loop over here now here what it is doing i is the index for these five sample sizes okay because there are five so n will be the sample size as 5 10 20 50 100 and i would be the index so it would iterate over each sample size in the sample sizes and this enumerate function is basically used to obtain both your index i and the value from the list okay so here we will now calculate the mean mean sample means would be calculated using your numpy library so np mean function sample means of all sizes so let me just use from here and here we would write i because that would be the corresponding index okay so if it is choosing the fifth sam si sample size 5 it means index will be 1 otherwise it will vary okay likewise we can also calculate the std of the sample mean standard deviation so again we will use the same logic and here sample means we can just copy it from here so for each sample size you will calculate the mean and standard deviation now we are going to generate values for the normal distribution curve generate values for normal distribution curve as we have done earlier also we will use that same thing x is equal to np dot line space so here we will write the minimum of the sample sum this sizes so let me write min of this particular one Similarly, there would be maximum. So, we are specifying the range for the x axis basically. Maximum it would go up till the sample means again. We can just write here and we want 100 equally placed points in between. Likewise, the corresponding y values will be calculated. So, for y, it will have norm dot pdf. So, here we will write x it will be plotted for it will take x values as the input so x and then mean of this so mean will be this one and with standard deviation we would mention so now finally you can plot the pdf curve we are ready to do that plt dot plot 
here it would be x comma y label sample size is equal to this and uh, we can also add labels and legend for this so let me this will be here finally these things we can copy from here so we want the x labels as suppose sample mean here we want the y to show that these are the pdfs and we can write here the title can be pdf probability density we can just write the small pdf curves for sample mean so clt visualization basically would come here and then plt finally we will display this figure okay so this is what you get over here okay so these are the histograms okay for central limit theorem and here these are the pdf corresponding pdf curve so you can see that this one sample size of size 5 this is very wide right this is very spread is more in this case whereas when you are increasing the sample size you can see that there is less variation the standard deviation is less in this case as compared to the other ones okay and so basically you can say that the values are very close to the mean okay in this case the values are very much far spread from the mean in this blue one okay so we have got a set of these pdf curves one for each sample size and we can see that how the distribution of the sample means basically changes as the sample size varies and this is basically your central limit theorem which states that sampling distribution of the sample mean becomes approximately normal as the sample size increases regardless of the shape of the population distribution.